Nowadays, the law seems to be the playground for a lot of unreasonable people that want to get rich fast or that simply like the attention. Some modern lawsuits read like the articles of The Onion, but that doesn't make them any less true. From a city suing a superhero to a spoiled brat suing his own mother, here are 20 crazy things you won't believe actually happened in court. Number 20. Man wants to legally change his age. Emil Rattelband, a 69-year-old Dutchman, wants his legal age reduced to 49 because he feels abused, wronged, and discriminated against by his age. Self-proclaimed young god, he's unhappy to be retired and considers himself a victim of discrimination because of his age in the job market and in dating apps. And to remedy his situation, he asked a judge to make him two decades younger. The unusual but serious request of Emil Rattelbond, unprecedented in Dutch judicial history, left the magistrates of a court in the southeast of the Netherlands speechless. The man wants his date of birth changed in his passport from March 11, 1949 to March 11, 1969. I feel young, I am sharp, and I want this to be recognized legally, he said. Emil is a personal coach specialized in the development of self-awareness. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? By all accounts, he doesn't seem to be very aware of his age. He argues that today we can choose our work, gender, political, and sexual orientation. We even have the right to change our name, so why not have the right to change our age? According to his doctor, the biological age of Emil Rattelbond is between 40 and 45 years old, specifies the sexagenarian. Now, of course, his demand was met by more than one laughter from the magistrates, who assured him that it would never happen. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the star topic. Chicken gets arrested for the dumbest reason. After being detained for 48 hours, the rooster that caused a strong fight between its owner and a neighbor in the city of Trujillo, Honduras, was released. For 48 hours, the bird's right to receive a conjugal visit was violated, since a beautiful hen wasn't within his reach, seeing as his leg was tied at all times to the bars of his cell in the police post. During the two days, as is customary, the rooster crowed at 4.45 and 5 a.m. Due to this, the police officers didn't need to activate their cell phone alarms to wake up. To the delight of the officers, the fighting bird was returned to his owner, who agreed to see that his pet would not climb up his neighbor's tree to wake him up every morning. Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. California woman sues Jelly Belly Candy, claiming beans were full of sugar. A California woman has filed a lawsuit against popular candy brand Jelly Belly after she was allegedly tricked by fraudulent statements into buying a product that she believed was sugar-free. The brand's legal misfortune began when Jessica Gomez bought Sport Beans, a product aimed at athletes and marketed as a carbohydrate, electrolyte, and vitamin-rich supplement. In the legal class action lawsuit, Gomez attacked the brand language, claiming that she had not realized the candy contained sugar, as in the ingredients listed on the package, the sweetening agent was called evaporated cane juice. In the lawsuit, the plaintiff stated that the avoidance of the word sugar was a deliberate attempt by part of the company to mislead the health-conscious customers that the Sport Beans product is intended for in the first place. And she's got a point. This is nonsense, was the response of Jelly Belly. They said that no reasonable consumer would have been deceived by the labeling. But why put it there in the first place, then? It's true that Gomez could have easily looked at the product sugar content on its nutrition facts label, but hey, the fact that Jelly Belly Candy Company was trying to mislead people is exactly the reason why they find themselves in this conundrum. Number 18. Texas man sues woman for texting in date. 
A Texas man has demanded a refund from a woman after he saw her texting someone else during their first date. Brandon Vesmar, 37, filed a lawsuit and sought damages in the amount of $17.31. He told a newspaper reporter that he spent that exact amount of money taking the woman, called Crystal Cruz, to a 3D screening of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 on May 6, 2017. Allegedly, right after the movie started, the defendant activated her mobile phone at least 10 to 20 times in a 15-minute period to read and send text messages which to him is a direct violation of theater policy. Vesmar accused her of adversely affecting the movie viewing experience. The man also told the newspapers that he met the woman online, that it was his first date with her, and he called her hellish and, quote, a threat to civilized society. However, she said that she was sending text messages to someone who needed her. Crystal Cruz initially refused to reimburse him because he took her out on a date. However, she relented after US TV program Inside Edition reunited the pair at the same cinema. The date just didn't work out, she told him, adding, just leave this alone. I don't know if she ever saw Vesmar again. If she didn't, she might have dodged a bullet with this one. Number 17. Footlong Sandwich is not a foot long. The fast food chain was rocked by controversy over the size of its foot-long sandwiches, which are often less than a foot, apparently. When they learned that the famous $5 sandwich, the foot-long, was actually one inch shorter, Subway's loyal U.S. customers decided to file a lawsuit against one of the world's largest fast food chains. In one week, there were already three people from New Jersey to have constituted class actions, a very common procedure in the U.S. that allows other individuals to join a complaint. It all started when Australian teenager Matt Corby posted a photo on Subway's Facebook page, which was later removed, of his sandwich that was 11 inches long instead of 12. The photo included his school ruler for any skeptics. He then asked other consumers around the world to check the next time they went to Subway if their sandwich was also 11 inches instead of 12. Photos of sandwiches measured around the world started piling up. The judge gave preliminary approval to a settlement between Subway and the plaintiff's attorneys. As part of the settlement, Subway agreed to institute practices for at least four years to make sure their footlongs are actually, well, a foot long. Number 16. Customers disappointed that Red Bull did not energize them. For many years, the world-famous slogan, Red Bull Gives You Wings, has accompanied the entire marketing strategy of the Austrian energy drink producer, except that many American customers, disappointed at not really being able to fly after drinking one or more cans, have decided to file a complaint for misleading marketing. It's hard to imagine that energy drink lovers could really think of gaining the ability to fly by consuming the drink, but in the land of the free, anything is grounds for a lawsuit, apparently. In addition, their complaint has been backed up by analysis that proved that beyond the expected wings that do not grow, the brand's promises are misleading. Our abilities are not increased tenfold after consuming the taurine drink. The company clearly didn't want to engage in the thorny path of American legal proceedings and therefore accepted an arrangement of $13 million with the plaintiffs. This compensation is available to all American consumers who have drunk one or more Red Bulls between the beginning of 2000 and October 2014 and didn't grow wings. To be entitled to it, you must fill out a simple form on a website created for the occasion. No proof of purchase is required. Anyone who joins the plaintiff group in this way will each receive $10 in compensation or a $15 voucher for branded products to an overall maximum of $13 million. Number 15 husband sues wife over ugly baby. Jian Fong and his wife were living the perfect love story until the birth of their first child. Deeming his baby ugly beyond description, he suspected his wife of having cheated on him, since they're both beautiful, according to him. But after several DNA tests proved he was the father, she finally confessed the truth that she has always tried to hide from him. She fessed up to having done about $100,000 worth of cosmetic surgery operations before meeting him. The husband felt completely betrayed. He first asked for a divorce, but 
that's not all. Jian Feng also sued his ex-wife, and the court ruled in his favor, ordering her to pay the sum of $120,000 to compensate for his lie and for his marriage under false pretenses. Apparently, plastic surgery is a topic of huge debate in China and other Asian countries. In fact, a cosmetic surgery clinic in Hong Kong had a bit of controversial fun with the situation, launching a questionable advertising campaign. The ad showed a gorgeous couple and their three not-so-pretty little children, with the caption, the only thing you have to worry about after plastic surgery is explaining it to your children. Number 14. U.S. lawsuit over underfilled junior mints boxes is thrown out. A judge dismissed a lawsuit claiming that Tootsie Roll Industries Incorporated tricked consumers into overpaying for their junior mints by filling more than one-third of the candy boxes with air. Three different plaintiffs accused the candy company of defrauding them because 35 to 43 percent of the boxes contained mostly empty space known as slack fill. But in a 44-page decision, U.S. District Judge Naomi Reis Buckwald in Manhattan found no fraud. She stated that reasonable consumers should be able to determine the weight and the number of candies from the packaging, and that they should expect some empty space just like in many other types of packaged food. Although it's true that they could make their boxes smaller to, I don't know, save some trees, it's also true that filing a lawsuit because of air in a box is a little out there, don't you think? The judge also refused to require fuller boxes because, she said, the plaintiffs were unlikely to be misled again. This judge is sassy. And on the other hand, hundreds of lawsuits have been filed in recent years over slack fill, with many in California and New York. And in some, the plaintiffs have won. Federal law allows some slack fill to protect a box's contents, or when contents settle during shipping. However, some brands use it to sell less product for a higher price, and that's a fact. Number 13. Kidnapper sues hostages for escaping. Okay, there's no way this one really happened, right? Wrong. It did happen, and it was as ridiculous as it sounds. Let's dig into it. His name is Jesse Dimmick, and he is accusing the couple he held hostage in their own home while he was escaping from the authorities. Dimmick claims that the couple broke an oral contract made when he promised them money if they hit him from police. The couple, bewildered by this absurd situation, have asked the judge to dismiss the suit. Dimmick made the law lawsuit while serving an 11-year sentence after the kidnapping event. He was wanted for questioning in a case of the beating to death of a man. He was being chased by the police, and that's when he had the idea of taking Jared and Lindsay Rowley hostage. The Rowleys filed a suit against him, seeking $75,000 for intruding in their home and causing emotional distress. In response, Dimmick decided to sue them back for breach of contract. He's asking the couple for $230,000 in part to pay for the hospital bills that resulted from him being shot by the police when they arrested him. Neighbors said that the rallies fed Dimmick snacks and watched movies with him until he fell asleep, and that's when they escaped unharmed. Number 12. Ambassador's wife sues over shocking Dexter poster that made her fall down subway stairs and break her foot. A Jonathy Njuad, the wife of an African diplomat, has filed a lawsuit claiming that she was badly injured when she was startled and scared by an ad for the TV show drama Dexter at Grand Central. In all fairness, the ad was rather huge for starters, and it was designed to be shocking. A close-up of the star of the show, Michael C. Hall, was featured wrapped in cellophane like the serial killer character did for his many gruesome crime scenes. The ad was spread across the rises of steps leading up to the Terminal. In the lawsuit filed in Bronx Supreme Court, Mrs. Njuad says the placement of the ad was hazardous and caused her to fall and break her foot. Now, the ad was designed to be eye-popping, arresting, and disturbing, said her lawyer. The neurological response you would get from it is shock, therefore it had no place inside a busy train station. Mrs. Njuad was walking down the staircase, a vantage point from which the ad was not visible. Unfortunately, she turned around midway to look for her elderly husband, a former ambassador for Gambia. The ad scared her. She wasn't expecting to see a blown-up man's face defiantly looking at her. It threw her off balance and broke her foot. The lawsuit, it seems, was dismissed. 
Number 11. Lawsuit over using just 75% of lip balm tube. Angela Ebner filed a class action lawsuit claiming that Fresh Incorporated cons consumers into thinking there's more of its sugar lip treatment in the tube than they could actually access. You know, there's always a bit of lip balm that you can only get out with your pinky finger or with a small tool. Ironically, that is exactly what a federal appeals court in California told Ebner when it dismissed her class action lawsuit. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit rejected the plaintiff's claim that the company tried to mislead consumers about the quantity of its sugar lip treatment, which sells for roughly $24 a tube. It's a fancy lip balm for sure, but the packaging is pretty much the same as any other lip balm. Maybe Ebner was expecting a more sophisticated mechanism, one that doesn't force you to use your pinky finger. Ebner had insisted that the way the company packaged and dispensed the lip treatment was in violation of her state's consumer protection laws. To be more specific, she said that the lip balm tube employs a twist-up mechanism that allows only 75% of the product to dispense beyond the tube's opening. Nevertheless, the court noted that no state or federal laws were breached because the package labels accurately indicate exactly how much lip balm is in each tube. Number 10. McDonald's customers suing for $5 million over unwanted quarter pounder cheese. If we were to open a McDonald's burger to find it had two slices of cheese on it that we didn't want, most would surely shrug and eat it anyway. Some of us would try to remove it before it completely melted, while others might wrap the burger up again, take it to the counter, and ask if they can change it to one without cheese. Or you could handle the situation the way Cynthia Kistner and Leonard Werner did. That is, calling your lawyer. The pair from Florida, of course, have sued the world's most popular fast food chain for $5 million after they were forced to pay for cheese that was removed from their cheese quarter pounders. Court material revealed that Cynthia Kistner of Broward County and Leonard Werner of Miami-Dade signed a complaint on the cheese charge in federal court. According to the lawsuit's document, McDonald's once offered four different burgers in the quarter pounder category, with prices ranging from 30 cents to 90 cents between them based on the variable of having cheese or not having cheese. However, at some point, McDonald's reduced its quarter pounder offering on the restaurant's menu, leaving only two options. Today, only the cheese quarter pounder or the double cheese quarter pounder are among the options consumers have to choose from. If a restaurant customer wants the previous option of the quarter pounder without cheese, they must inevitably order the one that includes the cheese and remove it later. And that, evidently, is unacceptable. Number 9. Drinking beer does not make fantasies come true? We've all seen the beer commercials where a guy opens a beer and suddenly he finds himself on a paradisiac beach with lots of gorgeous women around him, all looking very nice and happy and cool. Well, as much as that scene may be enticing for a lot of beer drinkers, most of us acknowledge that the perfect fantasy is just that, a fantasy. But Richard Overton didn't, and for it, he sued Anheuser-Busch for $10,000 in 1991, claiming false and misleading advertising that supposedly caused caused him emotional distress, mental injury, and financial loss. Overton said the beer failed to provide the supposed magical ability to facilitate scenic tropical settings, beautiful women, and unrestricted fun like is depicted in the ads. The case, of course, was dismissed. But Overton wasn't done, not by a long shot. In a 2007 interview, he took umbrage at his image of the sexually frustrated man. He said that the spark for the suit was seeing his three young kids captivated by Spuds McKenzie, the dog depicted in Bud Light commercials. He said that it isn't right to draw children into the culture of alcohol with advertisements designed for it. He did admit that targeting the company's failure to turn boozy fantasies into reality might have been the wrong tactic, though. Number 8. Man sues Michael Jordan for looking too much like him. Now, who in their right mind would be upset about looking like the best basketball player of all time? Not only was he one of the most talented athletes in history, but he was also, and still is, quite a good-looking man. Well, for Alan Heckard, his life as his heiress's doppelganger was hell on earth. Or so he claimed in his gigantic lawsuit to the NBA megastar and to Nike founder Phil Knight in 2006. $832 million was the size of the lawsuit laid upon the billionaire basketball player, half of the amount 
$416 million was aimed at Jordan simply for having similar facial features. And although for someone of MJ's stature, receiving lawsuits was a daily occurrence, this one was particularly bad and funny. But how exactly did Mr. Heckard suffer? Well, he was tired of being told by people that he looked like Michael Jordan. He sued for defamation and permanent injury, whilst also causing him emotional pain and suffering. He also sued Phil Knight because, according to him, he helped make MJ one of the most famous people on the planet. When he was asked why he chose to sue for such a staggering and quite frankly ludicrous amount, he simply said, well, you figure with my age and you multiply that by seven and uh, then I turn around and uh, well, I figure that's what it all boils down to. Yeah, you can imagine how quickly this case was dismissed. Number seven, man sues himself for $5 million. An inmate who claimed he violated his own civil rights by getting arrested decided to file a $5 million lawsuit against himself. He then asked the state to pay because he had no income in jail. Gotta give it to him, that's kinda genius. His name is Robert Lee Brock, a prisoner who was doing time at the Indian Creek Correctional Center in Chesapeake. He filed a handwritten, seven-page long lawsuit in federal court. He wrote, I partook of alcoholic beverages in 1993, July 1st, as a result result, I caused myself to violate my religious beliefs. This was done by my going out and getting arrested. It's important to note that Brock was serving a 23-year-long sentence for breaking and entering and grand larceny. I want to pay myself $5 million, he continued, but ask the state to pay it on my behalf since I can't work and am a ward of the state. Now, do you think he got away with it? If you thought the judge would throw the lawsuit in his face, you're right. Judge Rebecca Beach was absolutely unimpressed by Brock ingenuity. She immediately dismissed the lawsuit. Number 6. Man Suing Popeyes False Advertising for Running Out of Chicken Sandwiches a man from Chattanooga took his lawsuit against Popeye's Louisiana Chicken to trial in 2019. His name is Craig Barr, and he filed the lawsuit against the fast food chain for running out of chicken sandwiches during the summer. He was asking $5,000 in damages. Barr claimed that the company was engaged in false advertising and deceptive business practices. You go to one location and they're like, come back tomorrow. Nevertheless, Barr insists it was never about the sandwich. He claims it was also about the damages done to his vehicle in the parking lot of one of Popeye's locations. He also added that the parking lot is a hazard. He claims that there's a spot where a foot can go all the way down in the sewer and someone can get seriously hurt. At the same time, the fast food chain was expected to bring back the chicken sandwich permanently. However, Barr said that he would try to buy a sandwich only when he can do it safely. Number 5. Woman sues Starbucks over ice to coffee ratio in cold drinks. First it was too hot, then there's too much ice, Starbucks just can't seem to get it right. Or so an Illinois woman thought. She filed a lawsuit in Chicago accusing Starbucks of putting extra ice in the drinks instead of serving the advertised amount of coffee or other beverage in the plastic cups. The lawsuit was filed on behalf of Stacy Pincus, who accuses the company of misleading consumers. The lawsuit says that a 24-ounce cold drink contains only 14 ounces of liquid and that ice isn't a drink. Drink. I mean, she's got a point. A Starbucks customer who orders and pays for a drink receives significantly less than advertised, often as much as half less in fluid ounces, the lawsuit says, noting that the practice is by design to make people pay more for less product. Starbucks says the lawsuit lacks merit. Our customers understand and expect ice to be a special component of any frozen drink, spokesperson Jamie Riley said. If a customer isn't satisfied with the preparation of their drink, we're happy to prepare it again, to which Pincus replied that the word beverage is defined as a drinkable liquid. Ice is not a beverage by definition. If you buy 24 ounces of coffee, you should get 24 ounces of coffee. Number 4. Cheating Frenchman Sues Uber for Unmasking Affair 
This story's gonna make you laugh. The company Uber, rather known for its fight with taxis or with its own drivers, finds itself once more in the limelight for a case worthy of a bad soap opera. A man, currently living on the Côte d'Azur, is requesting several million euros in compensation from the Uber transport application. The reason? He accuses the American giant of having precipitated his divorce. The Côte d'Azur entrepreneur would have borrowed his wife's smartphone to connect via his account to the application but once connected, the app reportedly continued to send notifications to his wife's mobile phone, raising her suspicions about some of his movements and alleged infidelity. The man, therefore, makes the application responsible for the accelerated end of his marriage and is now claiming 45 million euros in compensation. The thing is, this flaw does exist among iPhone users who haven't updated their iOS version, and if it doesn't allow to see the destinations of the disconnected user or to geolocate him, it can however, communicate information such as the arrival time of the race or even the name of the driver. The salty bill for the separation, which would amount to several million euros, undoubtedly motivated the ex-husband to attack Uber. Number 3. 15 year old sues his mom for taking his phone off him. Every generation says that the next one is crazy, but this, this is too much. The criminal court of Almeria, Spain, has acquitted a mother who was sued by her 15-year-old son after she took away his mobile phone so he would stop playing games and start studying. The prosecutor's office suggested a sentence of nine months in prison for the mother, accusing her of mistreatment. However, Judge Luis Columna indicated in the ruling that it is evident that the parent was in the full right and correct exercise of the rights and obligations of parental authority when she took her son's phone. He adds that at no time did she exceed the limits of it, and he remarks that not having taken away the phone and letting her son not study would have been the wrong thing to do. Because among the obligations established in the Spanish Civil Code derived from parental authority is that of worrying about the education of the children, which is precisely what the defendant did without using any unnecessary rigor for it. In other words, this little brat just tried to send his mom to jail to jail for being a responsible mother and worrying about his education and his future. Where's the world going? Number 2. Man sues dry cleaners, breaking satisfaction guaranteed promise. In 2007, Custom Cleaners Dry Cleaning Shop in Washington was sued for $54 million over an allegedly missing pair of pants. It was Roy Pearson who sued over the missing trousers, but as it turns out, not only will he not get the millions, but he may have to pay the store owner's legal fees. Washington Superior Court Judge Judith Bartnoff said Pearson had not proven that the dry cleaning store had actually lost his prized pants. She also said that Pearson's theory that the owners owed him $54 four million dollars because they lost his pants despite a sign that ensures satisfaction guaranteed has no support in the law. She also said that the phrase satisfaction guaranteed does not mean that the store has to satisfy a customer's unreasonable demands. Ouch. Ironically, Pearson is an administrative law judge. Maybe that's why the case gained national attention after the lawsuit was filed. The trial completely backfired on him. In fact, the public response was so overwhelmingly in favor of the defendants that a defense fund for the dry cleaners was set up to accept online donations. The defendants were Korean immigrants Jin and Su Chung and their son, who own custom cleaners and two other dry cleaning stores in the Fort Lincoln section of Washington. The Chung said they paid thousands of dollars in legal fees. Number 1. City of Batman vs. Superhero Batman the caped crusader's latest nemesis isn't a little evil man or a crazy doctor. No. This time, it's Hussein Kalkin, the two-term long mayor of a city called, funnily enough, Batman. The mayor claims that he's grateful to Warner Bros. for having made the name Batman internationally famous, but that he nevertheless can't let them use the Batman name without permission. While lots of people see this lawsuit as preposterous, some view it as master guerrilla marketing. The remote little city that nobody knew of and has only recently come out of decades of political and economic turmoil is now in the headlines of newspapers 
newspapers all over the world. A local municipal worker said that they wouldn't have had better advertising for Batman the town even if the mayor had spent a million dollars. The lawsuit has not yet been filed, which corroborates the theory of this being a brilliant attempt of putting Batman on the map to attract tourists. With a mayor like that, they don't have to worry about their future. As you can see, nowadays, you can sue virtually anyone for anything. What about you? Have you ever been on either end of a crazy lawsuit? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.